I just wanted to find out a little bit about your history. You came, you're from Mullingar, which is where, by the way, I was baptized, which is a weird yeah. place to get baptized. But uh, baptized, <laughs> that's my is, excuse. Is that a, is that a euphemism for something I'm there. not quite getting? <laughs> I was baptized in Mullingar. I know. <laughs> it sounds like a very dodgy position. Go on, go ahead. <laughs> uh so how what you grew up there did you or what what, what was your um I grew, again it's when you're a teenager when you're younger or a teenager you fucking hate the town that you're from of course Particularly yeah. when it's a parochial little one horse town so not through anybody's fault i wanted to bomb the fucking place i, want, I couldn't <laughs> get out fast enough but then i left it i left uh Mullingar at 14 or 15 and uh I had a very weird relationship with it for, for a long time afterwards. Of course, yeah. You know, it's the kind of place where you walk in through a bar and you suddenly get a panic attack because everybody knows everybody. And you're suddenly the outsider in your own town and all those cliches. But then we went back years and years later. Uh, they RT had a screening of Patrick's Day in the cinema okay. there. Okay. And it was one of the most fucking moving things I've ever experienced in my life. The whole town seemed to be there. People had memories that I had never recollected. Their, their, their overwhelming love was the complete counterbalance to my twisted memory as a teenager. That's really interesting as well, yeah. isn't it? That, yeah. that our perceptions, like at that stage, yeah. I think a lot of it's boredom as well. Like kids get bored. I mean, don't but they? It's fear as well, and it's doubt, and it's all these things. But, but it's interesting because then I went back to a um, 30 year school reunion. Okay, and where were you? Were you in school in Mullingar, were you? Yeah, a place called okay. the Tech. I, I never finished it. I only went to, uh, I think, Junior Cert, they call it. So I never did the Leaving Cert. I never did the year before the Leaving Cert or anything like that. But, and that's its own chip on your shoulder, too, that you're carrying. But I went down, I hadn't been to the previous um, reunions, but I went down for that reunion. And again, just meeting these incredible people that in your head you had compartmentalized as being something entirely different than who they were sure. in reality. Yeah. So I think anybody who comes from a small town will understand the desperation to get out of it and then the reversal down the line when you recognize how blessed you are to have come from a tight community. It's very true. I live in Kilkenny now and I'm from Dublin and I never really mm. had that understanding of what and, and yeah. I mean we're very lucky in Kilkenny it's a very cultural space as well but uh, it's still very small and mm. like my teenage girl is um, Molly she's um she and her friends were like, oh, I can't wait to leave Kilkenny. And I'm looking at them with all their lovely walks and the people and the friends that are around. Like my daughter is so protected when she goes out, everyone knows she's her or else she's my daughter. And, you know, so you just wouldn't get that in Dublin. And I just don't think you really understand it when you're growing up. And then, you know, the outlets for people. I mean, even now, as teen, I think teenagers are just predetermined to be um, bored. <laughs> you know because you know even now they're bored but there's so many lessons and amenities and things to do but they're still bored so you know i think yeah, probably probably just to do at the age more than anything else so you left you left mongar uh, were you by yourself or what happened sir did you uh i i got a girl pregnant um she was 14 of, she was a couple oh, of years older than me <laughs> and uh she <laughs> good man <laughs> good man she's a beautiful beautiful woman i gotta say but um she ended up uh she miscarried but oh, okay um when i got her pregnant it's one of those cliched parochial small town scenarios somebody told somebody and the word got back to my parents and my parents were very young themselves when they had yeah Arthur, myself and my brother she was 16 herself so they didn't really know how to respond and everything got ugly and I became estranged from them for a few years and all that kind of stuff. So I, I stayed in a, a makeshift unfinished building uh, on top of a, a place called Double D's. It was a, a, a fish and chip shop or whatever. And then I thumbed a lift to Dublin to see what would happen. And I ended up staying with some very generous friends in Dublin, but then uh, the world changes and their students and everything. And so you go from, from being homeless to being uh, completely outside everything, to being incapable of connecting, to signing on the dole on your 18th birthday, to eventually, I remember going, I remember going to the dole office and I hadn't spoken to anybody in, I think it was two or three weeks. And I said hello to the woman behind the counter. And uh, 
she didn't even acknowledge me. And I remember thinking, I, I literally don't exist. I literally, in my, in my life, I don't exist. And uh, that's when you start going, you need to change something. You need to turn something around. And uh, very disconnected feeling then yeah. everything. Yeah, I, I would have felt similar at that age as well. I understand. And so how did you make the leap from there?